Greetings, settlers. All right, so I'm Kitsuaga here, and uh, I've been working with uh, Buddhist Manga Studios to bring uh, Sine Tempura, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, into uh, the tabletop simulator here, and going to provide a demo for you guys to play here later on. Uh, hopefully here in a couple weeks, we'll be able to push this out publicly. Uh, so we're in the middle of kind of creating a gameplay video for you. Uh, the video you're watching now is just going to be a primer for that that video. And, and what I want to do is just go through uh, every hero and their skills and what they're doing. And also some of the enemies that you'll be facing uh, on this mission here. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, just get down to it. Uh, so Akub is the, uh, the first hero we're going to talk about here. And uh, he's my favorite. He's the one I've been playing. And uh, he's kind of the leader of the pack. Uh, and uh, really like his, his play style and what, he, what he's got going on for him. So kind of just to cover, just real quick in general, what you're seeing here. Uh, on these player boards here, uh, if you kind of think of, of Cena Tempura, it, it feels like Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, but in a dungeon crawler, dice chucking... Uh, RPG, all kinds of fun. I, I just, I love it. There's so much depth to it. So many good options to choose. So that kind of helps us kind of get your mind in, in how the game works. Uh, so here on the side, we've got this here, and this is a rapidity. Uh, this is the speed and how many action points you can get in a turn. Uh, then we have precision. Uh, this is used mostly for uh, range shooting and, and things like that. Uh, and then you've got your physical. And right now he is a three. So that's also your defense and for your melee attacks. Uh, and this will be your mind here. Uh, so he's not very strong in the mind, uh, but very quick. And uh, last one here is your health. So he's got five health. Um, if you take five damage, five wounds, uh, your character pretty much passes out. And uh, on this side of the board, uh, you're going to have the skills and you can choose different skills at the start of your mission. Uh, and as you play uh, the campaign that they have for us, you'll be able to unlock uh, a lot of these skills. And um, I'll flip this over here and I'll show you. Uh, and so they start off with kind of your base skills and then you can upgrade them as you go. Uh, and on this side, it kind of tells you what all the different skills are. So these are loads of different things you can customize your character and play the way you want to play uh tons of great stuff i'm loving it uh so right now the mission that we're playing we're kind of leveled up three times uh in this and so some of the skills uh, i have now won't be ne necessarily the ones you start off with so we have those three and this one here is a passive skill so every character has a passive ability and this one's a tactician, and once per activation, a cap can uh, spend one AP to raise or lower his threat value. Uh, and that will be this here on the Pirellium. Uh, and this is uh, useful in uh, how enemies choose who they're going to attack. So the higher your threat value is, uh, enemies will come after you instead of um, someone else who is not very high in the threat value. And your threat value goes up anytime you wound an enemy. Anytime you kill an enemy, or anytime you heal uh, a hero, uh, when you pass out, uh, or when you die, we are not die, but when you your health gets to zero, uh, and you're you're out for a, bo a moment, uh, this will drop in the threat value a bit. So there's really not many other ways to manipulate that. So that's a nice passive ability to have. He's almost tanky, but my favorite part about ACAB here is his ability. Uh, on his weapons, uh, and we have the gun blade here. It's got three different attacks, and you can tell when an attack is uh, if there's a bullet on there. That's a, a physical type of attack, uh, but it's a range attack, and it's going to cost me three AP. So remember, I've got six action points, uh, and that's going to take half my my points. So I can move three and then uh, attack with this either of those. Uh, and there's the range. So it's a one to four. Uh, and I have an attack bonus. So the way these you, you determine how you're going to attack is, uh, so that's a range, remember the bullet, and I look at my precision, I have three. So that means I'm going to have a base of three dice, 
plus my attack bonus again, which is one there. And so for that attack, I'm going to need to roll four dice. So I'll roll these dice. And for every bullet symbol that I get, I will get damage to my enemy. So in this one here is a great roll. We've got one, two, three. Three damages uh, that will be applied to the enemy. And the uh, the other attack here is cost the same, but it has a range of one, but it has an attack bonus of two. And the type of damage it is, is it's, a, or a, it's still physical damage, but that's a melee attack. So with my physical then, it's a melee, so I have a base of three and an attack bonus of two for that. I get to have five dice total. Go ahead and just roll those and let's see what it gets. And I got one. So not the best of luck right now. Um, but the one great thing about ACAB here is that he's got a, an ability that I brought with me called Select a Point. And with this, uh, it's basically I can make any dice uh, that I want to be, any face that I want it to be. So I, any dice is wild. And I'll get that once per turn. And that's how that will work out. Uh, my favorite part about this is the combo. So I can spend four action points, and I get to use both of those attacks, leaving me two left over to move. Uh, so I can be pretty brutal on the, on the battlefield, taking out some enemies uh, with that combo there. He also uh, has this ability here, which is the charge uh, that we'll be using. It costs 5 AP, um, but I can move up to four squares and then perform a basic attack, which is uh, to be one of those two there. And uh, the only stipulation is that I, when I end that movement, I, I just have to be able to make that attack. So um, it's a good one to use. It leaves you with one left over, and you can really move, move down the field and attack. This next piece of equipment here will be uh, his armor, uh, which, which is real nice that it uh, immune to bleed. And uh, the enemies that we're facing in this mission, uh, some of them will cause bleed. So uh, bleed will, will cause damage to you at the end of your activation. So, you know, it's just something you don't, don't want to get stacked up with. Uh, and so the way that this armor is going to work, if, if I'm being attacked um, by a physical attack that's a, a range or a melee, I can add two to my base, which is three. So that would give me a five dice, and I'd roll that for defense. And uh, we'll, we'll cover that and what that's going to look like here in a bit. Uh, when an enemy attacks you, what you're rolling for and the symbols you're looking to get. And then we have the hollow advisor, uh, which right now is not the not so helpful uh but it does help with your your enemy drafts you can um pretty much put a card back in if you had an enemy that you didn't want to have you can make that one go back in the draft and then draft a new enemy uh these all do level up there's three different levels for all the equipment but i'm pretty much going to cover uh just what they are uh one other thing i think i should mention here too is you see this little symbol here um these are special abilities that if you pick up this loot while out in the game you can uh, cash it in, and so with this one, I can discard this blue energy cell and reroll all the defense dice during a physical attack uh, suffered by the captain. So that could be very useful. That's that's pretty much it for a cab. Let's go ahead and we'll uh, move on to another. So this is Alexandra, and uh, the stats are pretty similar. Uh, she's only got five rapidity. Uh, and all the other characters uh, so far in the rest of the game will have five. Uh, Acab's the only one with, with six in the most. Except for enemies, are, they're kind of all over the place. Uh, and so, yeah, basic rundown of just precision. Uh, her physical is not as strong, but her, her mind ability is a little bit better. Her life is five. Uh, and she works as a healer. Uh, and she's good at that. Her passive ability is uh, is great because she's got six hands. So she can pick up items for free without spending extra points and can equip six one-handed things. So uh, that's just, that's going to be lots of fun. So she's got some abilities here too, that even though uh, she looks kind of weak, um, but these abilities will stack here and this Neuron Blast will add uh, an extra uh, damage uh, to your attacks if any um, 
damage is received, you can add one to that, and then you add a bleed to that. Uh, and bleeds will, will basically take another additional damage off uh, later on at the end of that uh, enemy's activation. And uh, those are some good skills to start off with. Uh, if you're feeling you're kind of weak and you can kind of buff those up, uh, you can to do more damage to your attacks. Are there other things in here to improve maybe your defense if you want to or improve healing abilities? Uh, so right now she's got two abilities. She's got first aid here. Uh, which is pretty good. With two action points, you can roll five dice, and so anytime you get the blood symbol, you're going to hear uh, heal a hero uh, for every one of those. So let's see. We'll just go ahead and pull it out here. So as long as that hero is within three squares, we got two. So it can heal them for two. And she also has uh, this piece of equipment here. But as her drone, and with this drone, uh, it's, it's very similar, uh, but she's only rolling three dice. Uh, and with this, um, she has the ability to heal gyroids. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, but she can heal gyroids. Uh, and right now, there's uh, Alexandra or Andromeda, she is uh, in uh, this mission with us. And she's a, that's the only way she can be healed and taken care of. Uh, she can't be healed any other way. So uh, by following what it says here, uh, you'll be able to heal her. You won't be able to heal humans. You'll pretty much have to disable this for the rest of the mission. But uh, from then on out, you'll be able to heal uh, Andromeda. Help her out. Uh, so she has a an armor here. And so the way her armor is going to work is it provides plus two to any type of physical range attack or physical melee attack. Uh, so when an enemy attacks, she's going to have her uh, base to a uh, base of two here. She's going to be able to add two, so she's going to roll a total of four uh, for her defense. And we'll cover enemy attacks later and how that works. And kind of a standard gun here, uh, but the cool thing about hers is that she's got a reroll ability. Uh, and so she's got an attack bonus of two, and her precision is three, so she's going to roll five dice. So let's see what that's going to look like real quick. My own brains. Okay, there's one right there. Perfect. So that means I get to reroll that one, which is nice. So I've got one damage here, and I'll go ahead and reroll this. Uh, and uh, the rules in Senior Tempura is you can only re-roll a dice once. No matter what uh, reason or where you're getting the ability to re-roll it, it can only be re-rolled once. So if I got another brain on that one, I won't be able to re-roll it. Even if I had a re-roll token, I couldn't re-roll that. Uh, so it's only going to be one damage. All right, and that's going to be Alexandra. All right, this here is Andromeda 2.0. Not sure what happened to 1.0. Maybe we'll find out later. But uh, so yeah, let's start off with her passive ability here, and that basically means uh, she can't be healed uh, by anything unless it says it heals gynoids. Um, but the nice thing about that is she doesn't. She'll never get a penalty dice. And the way penalty dice work, if you, uh, I believe it's if you take three wounds. Uh, from then on out, you have to roll a penalty dice, and I took hers away because she didn't need it. What a penalty dice does, let's say we're doing an attack of five, uh, and we have three wounds, we have to roll a penalty dice. And so the penalty dice is exactly the same as the other dice, so it will take away whatever we get. So that's perfect right there. So because of that penalty dice, I lose that. Now I only get these results here to choose from. So she never has to do that. Uh, which helps her out a lot. Um, and she's got some good defense. So let's go over her skills here real quick. Uh, so at the beginning of her activation, she's going to get a, a reroll token. So she can reroll any dice. Uh, and that happens at every activation. She also has uh, this uh, here, which is shelter. During a token phase, she gains an endurance token, uh, which allows her to, for one of her defensive rolls to add. Uh, one to this, so she'll be have a base value of four against one attack. 
That was very helpful. And her last ability here is uh, Nail Down, which uh, if you get three of these push symbols, when you roll a dice on a basic attack, so coming from her uh, gun here, uh, that's going to prevent that model from moving during their next activation. So it's good for crowd control, keeping those big enemies uh, pinned back away from you. Uh, especially those melee ones, they can hit pretty hard. So let's go over her equipment here real quick. Uh, so her first line of defense is an energy shield. So anytime she's receiving a physical attack, melee or range, she can roll one dice, and if she gets the shield symbol, uh, the uh, attack is completely negated. So that's, that's real nice. And I believe it's a, a one in six chance on there with that shield. Um, yeah, one in six chance. So it doesn't always happen, but it's nice when it does. And you also have that reroll dice if you're really desperate to, to get that uh, to pop. Uh, but then she does have some uh, Titan plates here. And with this, uh, she gets plus one to her base defense, which is three. So she's going to be rolling four dice for defense, but only against uh, the physical attacks. Uh, so basically other attacks are like mind attacks. And she's also immune to poison. Now, her, her gun's pretty cool here, and I, I like uh, the mechanic that it has here. Uh, and it's got an attack bonus of two, and her precision's three, so we're going to be rolling five dice. So let's grab, grab these here. So on, on this gun, every, every gear we get, is, it's called a sustained attack. We're going to get to re-roll, or add, we're going to get to add a new dice. Okay, so... Didn't get any bullets, but I get to add three dice. So the way it works, you can add dice equal up to your originating uh, dice roll amount. So your originating number, which is five. So I can keep doing this until I get five damage. So your damage can never exceed the original amount in which you start off with with your dice. So let's reroll these here. Oh, there's a bullet and a gear. And there's two gears, so I get to add two more. It's a lot of dice, but not a lot of damage. I am not rolling well here. There we go. There's a little bit more. Okay, so two bullets. Um, it's still better than, than the one I would have started off with. But you can see that it can be pretty brutal if you get some good rolls. You get some reroll tokens and, and whatnot to uh, just cause a lot of damage to those enemies down below. And as you can see, those push symbols. And you're really rolling a lot of dice, you'll be getting those, and you'll be nailing down uh, some of those big guys. The last hero I have to show you is Jukas, and he's a psionic, which is kind of like a, a sorcerer. So he's the most unique, too, in that he's got a, a different um, ability here, and his own little deck, uh, it's called an Oblivion deck, and we'll kind of cover uh, what that does as we go. But you can see he's high in his mind power, which is good because that's what he needs, uh, but he's low in his precision there. Uh, so here's the abilities that we'll probably be using in this um, in this mission here. And we got fly, or well, I believe I can fly. So for one AP, uh, he can activate this, and so he's going to be flying. You can see his, his statue here is great. It's uh, suspended there. And uh, he can fly over obstacles and enemies. Um, be very useful in, in uh, putting your place yourself in the, in the right place uh, and then he also has uh, this ability and this is a psionic attack uh, and uh, they work a little bit differently uh, if they succeed the damage is always going to be guaranteed so this one's called energy last it costs three AP he's got to take a psionic test what he needs to get is a brain and a push we go do a test and right now he's got four mind so we get four dice here we'll roll those and we succeeded so we got what we needed oh look at that we really succeeded all right so that means he's going to do three damage to his opponents and or the to the enemy and he's going to gain two oblivion tokens so oblivion tokens are not good and uh yeah we'll we'll cover those here soon and he also has poison on there which uh, any sanic attack that inflicts at least one wound also inflicts poison. 
that will begin picking away at their at the enemy's life. Uh, and his passive ability, which is real nice, uh, but it also has its downfall. Uh, so during Jukus's token phase, the beginning of his activation, heroes that are real close to him within three squares, they're going to gain a re-roll token if they don't have one on them. Problem is, he can be a jerk sometimes. So yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. So you want to be close to him, but you don't want to be close to him. All right, so let's look at his equipment here. And uh, so we got a helmet here, and what this does pretty much gives him a reroll token at the beginning of every, or uh, there's not a reroll token at the beginning of his activation, he gets one. So if he doesn't use it, we'll just keep it to the next time. He does have some armor here, uh, kind of standard of what else uh, the other guys, the other teammates are running with. Uh, and then he has an energy scourge. So with his weapon here, he's got a basic attack here it's called a, just a slash and uh, these other things will activate depending on what you roll and what you want to go with so here he's got a attack bonus of two and this is a melee attack you can see the fist there so that's going to be his, uh, his physical strength so we'll have five dice two and three Focus. So we'll roll that and we'll see what we get and then we got one fist and two brains. Perfect. All right, so with this roll, it's, it's going to do one damage. But what we could do, uh, if the psionic, the psionic blade, so if the slash obtains two brains, it becomes a psionic attack. So that means the enemy's got to defend with their mind. Maybe it's an enemy that's got a strong physical um, defense uh, because you're going to lose attack value if they have a defense. So if you hit them for two and they have one, defense you're only going to have one damage go through but if they have zero mind defense then all of that damage will go through so uh, an enemy with one shield would be able to, to block uh, just that one fist but if we make it a psionic uh, blade then uh, this will get through so that's useful or we can use these brains here and we can do what's called conversion so for every uh, one of these we get we can make that a success so turning these into three fists basically doing three damage but for every dice you do that with you're going to gain oblivion tokens so yeah you can do some damage so let's do that we'll go ahead all right so we did three damage to our enemy uh, and now we're good all right so let's let's talk about these oblivion tokens and pain that they are so the, these are very powerful abilities, uh, but you're going to start stacking up these Oblivion Tokens. And at the beginning of your activation, if you have Oblivion Tokens, you have to do a Mind Test. So you have a Mind of four, so you grab four dice. And what you have to get, you have to get pushes. That's the little arrow symbols. And your pushes have to be equal to or greater than your Oblivion Tokens. So in order to succeed, I'm going to have to get four of these uh four pushes so let's roll these real quick and see so i failed only got two that means these do clear uh but if you ever fail you have to flip one of these cards and they're never good so let's read this one here for example the sonic must immediately use one of their sonic powers spending ap as usual to acquire double the amount of oblivion tokens okay so that, that worked out all right but you'll be um you'll be rolling uh you'll probably be rolling again the next time around uh there's a card in here too that uh pretty much makes you go uh hit the nearest hero for for damage so you're, you're doing friendly fire uh, so there's all kinds of cards in here and they don't always help you uh they're very uh you, you kind of lose control um if you were successful let's say i rolled all four pushes there these stay. They don't clear. These only clear if you fail. Now, there is an ability called meditation. And during your turn, you can spend some AP and you can clear off. Let's see here, we have that on here. That's so for three AP, you can remove all your oblivion tokens. So, 
that would be helpful if you think you're going to, to bust on your next turn and your friends are really weak and you don't want to risk a chance of pulling a card that's going to do damage to them. And yeah, you may want to just stop and think about it. Do some meditation. So let's start. Let's talk about these uh, frag spriggans. Uh, they're the little tiny guys here. And a lot of stuff you're going to see on their cards is very similar to, to the heroes. Uh, and so here's their rapidity. They have a speed of four, and they're going to have four action points. Uh, to take in a turn. Uh, this is their combat awareness, the CA, and this is used to, to determine who they're going to target and move after. Uh, here's their physical defense. These guys have zero. Uh, these guys have one for a mind defense, and they just have two life. Uh, and here's, this is going to be their attack uh, as a bullet storm. So it's a range attack, you've got the bullet symbol there, uh, and it's going to cost them two AP. So on their turn, they'll be able to move two spaces and make an attack. Uh, unless there's no enemies, then they'll move up to their full four, uh, as close to the heroes that they can get. Uh, and their attacks will have a range of two to five. Uh, and this is the damage that they're dealing. They're dealing one explosive. You can see over here, the, this guy on his attack, he's gonna be doing two fists and one bleed. So we'll, we'll talk about his when we get there. Um, so when they attack, let's let's go through that. and. Uh, We'll bring, bring him down over here. All right, so he's going to, let's say he's going to attack Andromeda here. And uh, drop some of these dice. Okay. So he's going to do an attack against her. So he's doing one damage to her. You think of it that way. A one explosive damage. So what the drama is going to do, first she's going to use this uh, this ability here, her energy shield. So let's just grab one dice, roll, and see if we get that. And we didn't get it. So the attack is coming in. Sorry about that. Now we need to do a normal defense roll here. And so it's a physical attack, so it's going to be hitting us there. So we get three dice for our base. And we're going to get plus one from this armor plate here. So we're going to get four dice. All right. So these are what we are defending against. This is our defense roll, and we defended against one explosion, which is perfect because that's the type of damage he was going to do. It. But if you read over here too, and you read down. Um, something here that's called malfunction. So if the defense test obtains a bullet and an explosion, then all adjacent models suffer one wound. So anything around this little spriggan, he was shooting at us, uh, and our defense roll, when we got a bullet and the, exp and the explosion, so his gun malfunctions, and everybody around him will take one wound, friendly or enemy. But uh, there's another exception to that, anti-blast. So if he's on this sector uh, of the time up here, if he's on this sector, which which he is right now at the beginning, uh, the malfunction it doesn't take effect. So and the last thing on this card here too that uh, you'll want to know, and it's called Shooter. This is kind of his AI and his tactics. Uh, and what a shooter does uh, is they try to get as far away from their enemy as possible while still being able to shoot at them. So if he was one square away from you, he would move two more away because he's got a move of two, and then have two ac uh, action points left to take a shot at you. So they're always going to try to get away from you and always start to run away. So some enemies will have these, some won't. Okay, now the hunter got rapidity of five. And he's got uh, PA of three. He's got one shield, uh, no mind, and then four health. So let's let's bring him over to um, a cab, and we'll have him do an attack against us. All right. So now this hunter is going to attack a cab. This is a melee attack, um, but it does have a reach of two. So even though it is melee, he can still hit me if I was two squares away from him. Uh, he's got five. AP, so he can move up to two squares and then spend his remaining three to make this attack. So 
he's going to try to hit me for three damage, two of those being fist and one being a bleed. So, again, I have a base defense of three and plus two for this type of attack. So I'm going to get five dice. What I need to get are two fists and one blood symbol. So I've got one, two fists, no blood. So I only block those two melee attacks coming in. I'm still going to get afflicted with bleed. But thankfully, I have immune to bleed, immunity to bleed, and I won't take it. Now I'm fine. So I'm going to flip the rolls here, and let's do an attack against the hunter uh, from ACAB, and I'm going to show you uh, what that's going to look like. So beginning my turn, let's say I'm already sitting right next to the hunter. And uh, so I got 6 AP. Uh, and let's do my combo. So let's just spend 4 AP, and then I'll get to do both of these attacks. So starting with my blade shot, which has attack bonus of one, and I'm needing to get bullets for that one. So base of three, and that gives me four dice. All right, ah, oh, great roll, look at that. So he's gonna hit, be hit with three damage. Uh, but he does have one physical defense, so one of these is gonna get negated. So he's only gonna get hit two, he's down to half life, that's great. Whatever, I still got one more attack to go here. And the last attack here will be my Blade Slash, which has the attack bonus of two and does physical damage, so I'm looking for some fists. Bring in my fifth dice there. Roll this. There we go. So we get two fists. Um, ah, still not enough, though. He's got one, so he's going to negate one of those. So he ends up with three wounds. Still got one life left. Lives to, to fight another round. So the Mauer Reaper is a pretty formidable foe here, and he's got six rapidity. So he, he can compete with ACAP on, on who gets to go first uh, if they're in the same area uh, on the momentum tracker. Uh, and uh, he's pretty brutal here. Uh, he's got a, the ability called Tornado for 3 AP in a range of uh, 1 to 4. Uh, and you need to block against two bullets. So again, if I'm ACAB, I roll five dice. I need to get two bullet symbols to prevent the, the damage coming in. And he also will do Nail Down, which will pin you in place uh, if he does any damage to you. So he can really lock you down. Um, and he's got this Hit and Run. Uh, ability too, so he can move, spend up to the six AP, and he can move four squares and attack. So he can really do that uh, pretty much almost any time if he ever sees you. He's got a range of four, so he's he's pretty brutal in that he's uh, can really chase you down. There's definitely no running away from this guy. And our last enemy, the bully, and he's a big one. He's almost he's he's definitely above the level we're at in this mission. Uh, and we're going to need all four of our heroes to take him down. Uh, and th that's the point of this mission. So uh, what we do is, as heroes, uh, we start uh, off in this corner here, and, and we have to work our way in, and there's these teleports that will take you from here over to where the bully's at. And these only can be used at once. So in order to get all four of us over there, we have to get all four of us to one of these locations. And we have to work through those enemies, and you don't have much time. So you want to get all four guys to pop over there as quick as you can, and almost at the same time, and to hit him hard and all at once. If not, he's going to be doing a lot of damage to you. So, yeah, it's, it's been pretty rough playing the mission. And uh, he's he's got some brutal attacks here. Uh, and he's got a uh, defense of two, so you have to hit him really hard. He's got a life of 12. So he's, he's, he's going to be difficult to take down. Uh, and he's got one of these combo attacks. So he, he's able to move one square, and if you're within one square, he's going to do a combo attack on you. He's really going to rip you up. So his first attack is going to... Um, He's going to have a range of one, uh, but it does have a reach of two, so he, he still can hit out two squares. And it is a melee attack, but that reach on there, he, yeah, he's going to get you. 
And in order to defend against this attack, uh, like ACAB with five dice, he's going to have to get three fist symbols to defend that, that, that three damage coming in. And again, he only has, you know, your characters, your heroes are have five or six life, so that's it's almost going to take out your whole life if you don't get any, any fists in your defense roll. And then we got the Ivory Slash, which is going to do bleed damage to you. Uh, and so you've got to get two of those blood symbols. Uh, and they don't all come in at one at one attack, so uh, he'll do his first attack, he'll defend. He'll do his second attack, he'll, he'll roll your dice and defend. So... Yeah, it, that could, uh, if it's just you in there, you're not going to last long. He also has this ability here, it's called uh, Whirlwind, and it activates, uh, if he is starts his activation uh, on the symbol on the Momentum Tracker, which is going to be uh, up here. So if he starts his activation, and when he's starting and he's in there, uh, he's going to be able to use this uh, ability that he has here. And what this will do is basically turn his attack into an AoE attack. Uh, so all the enemies uh, that are adjacent to him are targeted by his attack. So yeah, you you don't want to pop it into his square <laughs> when he's in that activation mode. So the last thing I'm going to cover is the momentum tracker. Uh, and I really love this mechanic because it really can can lead to some great decisions. And, and how you want to play, um, you, you want to go all out and make some big attacks, you can do that. Or if you want to just, you know, do a couple little things, it just really adds to a lot of strategy in the game. So the way it works, it's kind of like a clock here. In, in the middle, you've got like the hour hand, and then the outside, you've got the minutes. Uh, and right now, this mission, we're starting out on 5.4. You can see the little little arrow there points to the 5, So and we're on phase 4. And there's nobody in this here, so no one's going to activate. And then it's going to just uh, tick up to the next uh, next phase here. And the way activation works is whoever has the highest rapidity gets to go first. So the Mowers have six, so they're going to go all the way up there. And the way the, the scenario is going to work out here, um, we're in stealth mode, and so we're kind of sneaking around. They don't know we're here yet. and uh, they're going to be doing what's called patrol. Uh, the mission states um, they'll be doing a patrol, so they'll be kind of moving around the map a little bit. So they're going to take their turn, and they're going to do their patrol action, and then they're going to move up to their maximum rapidity, six. It's always their maximum. So he goes out six. Uh, the bully's five. One. Then he was five as well, and then these guys are four. So you move all, the whole group of them, and then one, two, three, four. They didn't find us in their patrol. Everything's fine. They're still unaware. They're still walking around the map doing their thing. And then we'll just uh, move this up to the next phase. And uh, so I have uh, the ACAB has six, uh, and everyone else has five. So ACAB will get to go first. Now let's say I want to be strategic here, and I really want to activate again my next, the second turn before this this hunter gets to go. So if I choose to use six, I'm going to end up there, and I could use six, uh, but I, I can't game the game and say, oh, I'm only going to go two, and then I'll wait for my next turn. So there, you can't really do that. They've put a rule on that. It's called a time shift. You have to move up to the minimum of uh, you, that you can to get to the next enemy. So I have to move at least three. If there were no enemies, then I would just move six. Um, but I have to move a minimum of or take three action points. If I don't take only take two action points, I automatically shift up there anyways. And then I lose whatever I didn't have. So uh, let's say out of the six, let's say I only wanted to use five. So I'm going to move five. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Right. Or four. Let's so just go four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm going to move four. Put myself there, and then I'm done. So those other two that I would have used are lost, uh, and I'll just start off with six again the next time around. And then everybody else will kind of move, do what they want to do. Uh, they all have five. Um, then we'll just advance this until we get to the next group. And uh, so she has five rapidity. He has four. 
so Alexandra is going to go before the Spriggans. Go. So she'll get to take her action. She can only, if she wants to, just take up to two. Or she can go all the way out and use all, all five of hers. Uh, and then he's going to get to do his patrol again. And he'll move up, up to four. One, two, three, four. So they always move their max rapidity. So now it's to me. So the way uh, it works, if there's enemies in your square, is highest rapidity. If there's a tie, enemies go first, then heroes. Uh, then heroes, if it's a tie, can choose who wants to go first. So out of this group here, I, uh, ACAB has the highest rapidity. So if I wanted to, I could just take one action. Move up there, he's the closest. And, and that way, um, <clears throat> uh, I could try to activate around the same time as he's going to do it again. Or go out to here at least. And, and in this square, I'll be able to activate before these guys do. So they only have four. And then so on and so forth. That's how it works. It's it's pretty straightforward once you kind of get the grasp of uh, how the time and all that stuff is working out. Well, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, you're an amazing person. Uh, and uh, this is a great game. Uh, I'm really excited for it. I've been having a lot of fun playing it. Uh, and uh, just with my friends, uh, we're playing. And uh, it's, it's good stuff. Uh, and I'm really excited to get this uh, gameplay video uh, coming out for you guys here pretty soon. Um, and uh, yeah, just, just hold out. I know there's been delay issues, but man, it's, it's a good game. I'm really liking it. Uh, and yeah, I hope for it to be on your table here soon.